Uh. What's up, YouTube? Poor Man Podcast back with another video. All right. Today's video is going to be the Queen's Ass Ice Cube about black women in the contract. Okay, this is from Cocktails with the Queens. This is on something called Soul Fox. All right. It has uh, just a panel of black women, prominent black women, black women that have been actresses, you know, just different business women, just in, in, different, in different areas, okay? Most of these black women in particular are single, getting a little older, and the danger zone. All right? So it's a little bit of... I just want y'all to see how black women are weaponized against black men. Okay. Now, before I get too far into it, got to do the YouTube stuff. Make sure y'all hit that like and that subscribe button. I'm trying to get to 1,000 subscribers before February. That's my goal. Everybody got to have goals. I hope y'all got goals. Y'all can help me achieve mine by just hitting the little red button in the corner. I don't know where it is. It's somewhere. Just find the subscribe button. Go and click it. It's free. If you're picking up what I'm putting down, if you like what I'm, what I'm saying, I'm going to be making content every day. You're gonna be seeing this face every day, regardless. They gonna they gonna send it to you on the on the related and the and the suggested all that. So you might as well go and hit the subscribe button, man. Go and help a brother out. Give me the HBO special. You know what that mean? That mean help a brother out. All right, I know y'all busy people, so let's get right into the video. I wanna I want y'all to see how the Democratic Party has convinced Black women to be or or have made them a weapon against Black men. Okay, now let's get right into it. I ain't trying to waste y'all time. A legendary rap. Also, this is going to be long form. This is going to be my first really probably long form video. I know I'm going to have a lot to say because I'm passionate about the topic. If you have the attention span of a goldfish, this video probably won't be for you. I got shorter videos. You go click on one of them. All right. But if you if you if you to the level where you can sit down for a little bit, you know, maybe take a little sip of something, you know, take a little sip of something. And enjoy the show. You want to hear me out. You on the road. You working. Whatever you want to do. You want to hear me out for a little bit. This is the video for you. Now let's get into it. And film producer who is making headlines not only for his music but his involvement with policy and politics. Please, everybody, welcome Ice Cube. Hello, sir. Hey, hey what's you. up? How y'all doing? Hey, you. Yo, what's up? What's, what's up, up, Lisa Ray? How you doing? I'm great. I'm great. Thank you. Good, good, good. How's everybody doing? Bless, bless. Good, good. And, and we're also very appreciative of you taking the time to come talk to us here. I know everyone's trying to get a piece of you and talk to you and have you on their platform. So we definitely um, appreciate that. So thank you. I, I want to ask you just out the gate how you're doing. You know, how how have you been coping with the pandemic, the civil unrest? These are, tr I mean, Black people have, all, have always been through trying times, but it's yeah. a little extra right now on top of our regular stress. Getting different. We got another layer on top. You know, we got 10 on 20 right now. So how are you doing? I'm doing good. Um, you know, Before we really even get into it, you already see kind of what I'm talking about. I know this one, uh, you're, you're seeing black women be the voice of the black, of black people. Okay? All right? You go back 40, 50, 60 years ago, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Black Panther Party. Okay? It was brothers leading these movements. What switched... To the point where now women are leading our movements and guiding our conversations. There's nothing wrong with my my black women out there, all right. In terms of uh, being next to us during this conversation, okay. I'm not saying y'all beneath us or whatever. Y'all might, you know, people start getting crazy. You start hearing key words. People start getting crazy, all right. I'm not saying y'all beneath us, but in no other race do you see the women leading the conversation. But for some reason. Instead of Joe Biden talking to a man like Ice Cube, he's over there talking to Cardi B. You feel me? Why is that even a conversation? Let's keep it going. The pandemic, it hit everybody um, and caught everybody off guard. Uh, thank God for D-Nice, who uh, started yes. spending them records, man, I and know, kept people right? just, you know, kind of you kept our sanity, you know what I'm saying? And then, and then the thing with uh, George Floyd happened. Yes. Which shook everybody to our core. By the way, I'm from Minnesota. So when the George Floyd thing happened, I was, I was right across the street. You feel me? And not literally right across the street, but figuratively I'm right down the road. 
All right, so it really did affect Minnesota, especially in a crazy way. But I'm going to let them keep going. I just want, you know, it's a little key point, a little fun fact. Some y'all know about me now. You know, when you hear a man, you know, scream for his mama, mm-hmm. I think everybody in the world felt that. So, yes. you know, uh, everything sh- switched reels for me. And I, uh, I just been on this quest trying to, trying to get us true equality, you know, not just equality on, you know, social issues, but economic equality, which is, you know, just as important. Well, let's just jump right in then, Q, um, because I have been, you know, looking at some of the um, bites from your interview. You did an interview with Roland Martin, which Mm -hmm. helped me, I want to say, because I will say that when I first heard that you were supporting Trump, I was like, wait a minute, what? Hold on, because you my boy. So I was like, I got a personal I, insight. I'm going to call I, him directly. I didn't say I was supporting Trump. So no, And see, that's I was going to say that. I'm happy Cube said it off the rip. All right. Our women, like, if there's anything that goes against the Democratic Party is what it is, is what they attack. Even if it's against them as black women. Okay, feminism is not for black women, but if a black man say anything about another race of woman or anything about anything, it, you're a feminist or you're um you're sexist, you're a bigot. Black women are the first ones to jump on that train to protect these democratic ideas. I've never understood that because the Democratic Party, let's keep it a buck. I'm not saying the Republican Party did more. I'm not saying they've done more or are doing currently more. I'm just saying that if we keep it a buck, ain't nobody doing nothing. Right. So I don't know why black women go to bat so hard for democratic views and and uh, for for the idea. I don't understand it because a lot of it isn't for black women. It is to separate black men and black women. But let's keep going. Right. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's what I heard. That's what the bite, mm. the sound bite. Yeah. You know, that's why people got to do their research. And I watched that interview and I heard you break it down to why you were involved, why you met with both sides. And when you got involved, which was not just recently. And so yeah. when I said, you know, uh, um, what contract was he talking about? This contract of Black America? Like, mm-hmm. what is that? Where did it come from? I did not know. So when I said, when I think of things that I don't know, I automatically assume that a whole lot of people out there don't know. So I would want you to educate me as well. So what did make you go to the administration and, and speak with them? Well, what happened was, you know, it was a lot of yelling, a lot of people upset, a lot of uh, reforms being put on the table during George Floyd. But I was looking around for a document that really was speaking on what's, what's the needs in the community and what what do we need across the board, not just from government, but from the private sector too. Because mm. um, there's a lot of companies that are involved in our pain and, and they got to pay up too. You know, it's, it, they owe us reparations as well in some uh shape or form so uh it was nothing i was looking around i'm like damn where is the document where is the acts what are we asking for as a people across the board that deals with not only police brutality but all our needs um so i started working on, on it myself with you know some smart people i know we end up getting um you know, economists involved, uh, people like Derek Hamilton. Um, you know, we started to go and just find the smartest minds to help try to put a document together so we can actually have something to say, damn, all this is things we need. This is so anybody black could look at our document and say, yeah, support this, support, you know, some of the things that we have now. I'm not a politician right? and I, I shouldn't be the one to have to put this thing together. We've had politicians in place for a long time and they haven't come up with something like this. So I was surprised, but that didn't stop me. And we put that together July 1st. Everybody know the first rule is get it in writing. I'm so happy this brother ice cube. <laughs> Ice Cube, you've been putting on for the culture since the beginning, bro. N.W.A. Boys in the Hood, all the Fridays movies. Players Club. 
Hell, I even take Are We There Yet. I don't care. I even take Are We There Yet. At least it was black. At least it was about black love and black families. All right. Uh, it's it's just interesting to see that he's he's right. Every every important thing that's ever been done in this country, in particular, has been on paper. There we haven't had any guidance as far as black people in terms of what exactly we want and what exactly our demands are, because we are, I believe, we should get reparations. America doesn't become as great as it is, and I love America, by the way, y'all. So if y'all get on that uh on that train to hate America, I've, I'm well traveled. Okay, with the rugby team, I've traveled to 12 different countries. Kenya, Hong Kong, Uruguay, Paraguay, Chile, um, uh, Ireland, France, England. I've been all over the place. And I'm telling you right now, when I, every, every place got their problems. Okay? Most places don't like black people regardless of where you are. Okay? It ain't like it's just here in America. All right? But at least here I can get a cheesy cheese cheese pizza in 20 minutes or less. Okay? So I like it here. All right, I like having AC everywhere I go. All right, I like being able to drink my bath water. Okay, uh, you have drinkable water you bathe in, is what I'm saying. All right, that's a that's a blessing. All right, so I'm I'm just saying it's it's just interesting to see that he had to be the person to step up and make things happen because we have all these black leaders for so long, but since the '60s, '70s, ain't nothing been going on in terms of actual progression. Ain't nobody got nothing to write. So he got with other brilliant black minds to put something together. And I think uh, you could take your hat off to that for sure. And we revamped it about, uh, let me get the timeline here. We revamped it July 19th. And from then, people wanted to interview me about it. So I went on just promoting the contract with Black America, you know, hoping to be contacted by any of the politicians saying, yo, this is a great idea. Everybody that I would show would say, oh, these are great ideas. This is common sense. This is things that should be in place already, but they're not. So I was just kind of saying, okay, starting we don't the initiative. Want... Yeah, starting the initiative, and I'll make a long story short. I was just going up, basically saying, okay, we're going to go after the private sector. We're going to go after the banks. We're going to go after Hollywood. We're going to go after the people that we know got their hands in the cookie jar. You know what I mean? So then we started to get contacted from, we got contacted from the Democrats on um, September 8th. And then we started talking to them. Mm -hmm. Then we got contacted by the Republicans. Mm -hmm. So that's when the ball started rolling then. So it's not just like I just jumped into anything. I mean, I just did the contract. And then people started to contact me, not the other way around. I was hoping the Democrats would be all over me. Um, but, you know, that wasn't the case. And and I understand it wasn't like I was throwing a fit. I just was like, OK, we're going at the private sector. And then the Republicans contacted me. And to me, if you speak it for black people, you should speak to whoever is in power or about to be in power. And I think you had a statistic and you said something about there has been 7,000 black people elected and you felt like in offices for us and you felt like they made a change. They have, we've not come far at all with 7,000 of us in there. What are we going to do? Who is going to take this and say, okay, I'll be in the front line of this and then get in the front line and have everybody on, come on board with you. Because let's be honest, you are Ice Cube and you do have a, a huge platform. So I, I, I would say that um, for me to know that you've been using your platform to be able to have an initiative like that, I think it's worth you doing the interviews that you're doing and letting everybody know and hear your voice. On I want to jump in and say, I just don't think it's that fair to, to the 7,000 Black elected officials that have been in office. It's right, not to say that they've done nothing. Right? Yeah, because I, I think that is, I, I, I think that's a slippery slope to, to walk down because as we saw with Barack Obama. A lot Obama, of progress has been made. It's not as simple as you get elected and bam, you can make all these changes one man. Right. One I, I never said that 7,000 people Black people have never did anything. I said that since the 60s, there's been over 7,000 black uh, politicians elected in prominent positions 
And our situation, you know, as far as the wealth gap hasn't changed. We flatlined from the 60s to now. We've had we have not gained or closed the wealth gap. So that's the major problem. I understand we got a lot of people, you know, working hard for progress that the just the facts are it hasn't happened in the traditional way. So that's why I want to break the mold. So for, I, I just want to say, um, first of all, you know, there's this whole cancel cancel um, <coughs> culture that we have. First of all, anybody canceling no damn ice cube. Let me just say that first out the gate. Uh, this is NWA. Thank you. He was the first to say, fuck the police. So go sit down. Nobody's canceling ice cube. And if you are canceling, that's fucking stupid. Second of all, I do think that it is very... I understand where she's going, okay? And I agree with her. But ladies, the language, okay? If we're all going to sit down and have a conversation, d d you don't see that. You don't see Ice Cube coming on here with these vulgar words, all right? Just have a little bit of, you know, elegance. I don't know. What's the word for I just, I don't know. It's just something about when a woman just get to cursing and just moving like a man, like... It just seems so, I don't know, masculine. <laughs> Shoot, I don't know. And and and, bl and black women, we love y'all, okay? When we say black women, are, we're not attracted to black women, it's not y'all how y'all look. Y'all look amazing. Y'all features are everywhere. Everybody's copying y'all features. We understand that. Y'all look great. Unbeatable, arguably, Okay? But when we say this, we're talking about the attitude when we say you're unattractive. Okay, when some black dudes say they are not attracted to black women, it's usually the attitude, the mental, the mental part, how you're thinking. Okay, so we love you black women. Trust me, as a black man to y'all, if there's any black women listening to this video, and I think a lot of my brothers will agree, that we love black women. Especially how y'all look, y'all are gorgeous. Y'all are beautiful. A lot of the times. Okay, it's just the mentality that we got to change. And the weight, you know, sometimes, you know, a little bit of weight in there too. You know, you got to figure it out. But most black men, especially physically speaking, love black women. Very good that you are taking an initiative to, um, and, and I like how you say bipartisan, because that means both parties. This is for both parties. We want both parties to jump onto this. This is not just, oh, this person, that person. We want everybody to grab a hold on to what African-American people need singularly. And I remember we talked about this on cocktails. Remember, Lisa Ray, when you, you asked the question before, you were like, well, who's going to do something? Who's going to lead singularly for African-Americans? Now, I do know that there have been tons of initiatives. CD, CBC has initiatives all the time, Congressional Black Caucus, uh, the Nation of Islam. Hey, I right here, national agenda. They've had um, an entire agenda that happened right after the Million Man March. It was presented to, um, uh, what's the name? The, the president that was in, what's his name? Clinton. It was, it was presented to the Clinton administration. So we have tried, there has been trying going on. But one thing I do like about your initiative is that it is singular to black people. That gap, that wealth gap is a fool and it does need to be fixed immediately. But here's my question. I watched you on the Black Report the other day on Friday, and they asked you, hey, Q, what do you think about, you know, when you see the Black Man March, and how does that make you feel? And you said something that was really profound that stood out to me. You said, you know what? I wish that Black people and Black men could watch this over again and get back to this, because you said, even myself, we, haven't, we need to get back to this type of unity, this type of connecting. And so my thing is, let's say whoever get in office, it ain't going to matter. The, the initiative is set and then it's like nothing's happening or what or something is happening or whatever, you know, it's there. Now, well, let's say they give us all the $500 billion that we asked for. Do you honestly think, and I'm not even trying to be, um, I'm not even trying to be funny or trying to catch nobody up or not. I'm just asking like a real question. With the state of how our community is already broken, how we already have PTSD, how we already are not connecting already interculturally, the infrastructure of African-Americans in general is just jammed up with or without money. Do you think, and what could be the process of once we get this money of implementing it properly into our communities and really being able to allocate it where it makes sense and matters and what's going to be necessary for that to happen? 
Well, you know, what I said on the show about the Million Man March was the fact that it was the Million Man March, but it was a day of atonement. Mm -hmm. It was a day where we were going to bury the hatchet with each other. It was the day when we were supposed to go back to our neighborhood kind of as new people and try to, you know, make things better. Um, And, you know, it just didn't happen the way you know, we all envisioned it, uh, but that don't mean we we can't start. You know, we do need uh, financial help in our communities, but we also got to, we got to make a commitment to ourselves to clean up ourselves. You know, it do start with the person in the mirror. Uh, you know, you can't deal with the white man out here until you deal with the white man in there. You see what I mean? So you you have to clean up. We have to clean up ourselves. We've been poisoned. Talk to him, Cube. All right? Cube, y'all hear Cube talking. Talk to this. Talk to the group, Cube. Go talk to him. He's taking us to church right now. Telling y'all it's Sunday, too. He's taking us to church. Sunday over here. I know when I drop the video, it might not be Sunday. But Sunday when I'm recording the video. Fun fact. By this society. We've been poisoned by trying to live like the people who've had us oppressed and and what they are attracted to, we're attracted to. We got to come out of that. We got to be our own people with our own flavor, our own style, our own morals. And we got to flip it. You know, I'm I'm not Mr. Holy. I'm guilty of it, too. So it's something we all have to start doing uh, to clean ourselves up. But I think the key is is to uh, try to get the money in the, in the hands of people who are doing things, who are trying to be on the right side, the progressive people, the people who are, uh, you know, business owners, people who want to own homes, you know, people who want to beautify their homes so it, it isn't, you know, just gentrified, you know. So it's things where we can get money into responsible people's hands and hopefully they'll hire the community to teach the community. They'll uh, use the community to to hopefully clean clean the community up. You know, I also think the government has a job too. You know, why you use the armies just to come in and and put guns on us and make sure we're not protesting? Why you don't use the armies to come fix fences and roofs and 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 paint walls and do things to beautify the neighborhood? You know, it's like. They got to rethink how government works for the people. And they're not going to do it using the same old ways. You're going to have to push them. You're going to have to find pressure points. And you're going to have to use leverage uh, when it's time. You know, everybody got to make a quick statement, though, Q. Go ahead. If the administration that is in there right now hasn't done it for the past three and a half years, what do you think is going to make them start in the next four years that they are given more and given more during a pandemic. I know you got to take a break, hold that thought, but I just got to ask that and and make that statement because mm -hmm. you can't make them, owe them all of that. Well, what has the other party done in the past four years, past eight years with Obama? What have they done for black people? And I'm not talking about for transgenders, LGBTQ, all of that other stuff. I'm talking about four black people. I'll wait. Anybody? Anybody in the audience? Any? No, there ain't none. Because they ain't been doing nothing either. But we willing to go to bat. We willing to die for the Democratic Party. Especially our women. And they've been there for three and a half years. So very, Yeah, very, I, I, ain't, I ain't trying very, to make them do nothing, so... We need them to do something if we're going to trust them to do it. Hold on, guys. We got to take a quick break. I definitely want to talk about that. I definitely want to talk about, Keith, you hit on some very, very good points about the military. But this current administration is using the military to enforce their own agenda. And we want to talk about that. So let's take a quick break. A lot of gems are being dropped here. We'll be back. Oh, they're using the military to stop people from burning down businesses. Okay. This was in the time of the George Floyd thing. And when they say the military is being used, they're talking about against the riots, okay? And I am all for, if you're going to, here's my thing. If you're going to riot, do it in a neighborhood that, that you feel like is being oppressive to you. Don't do it in your own neighborhood and destroy your own stuff. 
Okay, just don't because you're destroying the business. You're making it so businesses don't feel safe. And if businesses don't feel safe, they won't come in. Therefore, the economy dies in the area. Okay, so if you want to go out and, and rage against the machine or whatever you want to do. Do it in a neighborhood that's, that you feel like is oppressing you. All right. So when they talking about the military coming in and being used this and that. They're not using it. The Republican Party wasn't using it to, to further their agenda. They were using it to get peace. To make sure that people were following the law. Okay? So you're not just burning stuff down. More cocktails with the Queens when we return right after this break. Welcome back to Cocktails with the Queens. We have Ice Cube here, and we are talking about his contract with Black America and, and some very legit questions here. Vivica, before we went to break, you asked about if the current administration has not done it in three and a half years. Why now is this, this massive push with two weeks before the election? I understand Ice Cube. You've been working with this since June, July, but we're hearing about it now. So it looks really, I, I think Convenient. a lot of black folks, it looks very, yeah, like I feel like I don't, and I know this isn't your intention, but I feel like, you know how they use us all the damn time. You well, know what I, mean? I mean, both sides use celebrities, but check this out. The thing is this, I'm not here saying he gonna do anything, but he didn't make a promise to me. He made a campaign promise to the world. So he's on record for that. Now, we wanted Joe Biden on record. He has a plan, but I don't know if his plan really pinpoints black people. So. We yeah. want a plan that pinpoints black people. We don't know if any of them are going to do it. But when you have a person on record as a campaign promise, you have more to go at him with because mm -hmm. he's told the world this is what he's going to do. And if he doesn't deliver, he looks bad to everybody. Now, why hasn't dude done it in three years? I don't know. Nobody's been pressing him. Everybody's been like, he's the boogeyman run. And nobody's been pressing them on behalf of black people because we've been just waiting for Democrats That's to get a good back. Point. You know, I do and, not agree with and, you on that statement. There has been a well, lot. That is 100 percent true. Ain't no black people stepped up and put no pressure on Donald Trump to do anything. All right? ain't no ain't no black people done that. Ain't none of, none of them have done it. So how you gonna expect some results if we ain't even showing that we care about it enough to to go out there and make something like the document uh, Ice Cube came up with? I right. a lot of people that have asked what, him, what about the wall? What about the kids? What, what, cages? What, what, I mean, there's a lot of things I, that, I, I just, that has nothing to do with black people. OK, and this is the thing that a lot of uh, a lot of our women get mixed up when they follow the Democratic Party. Our movement was the civil rights movement. Nobody cared about us until then. All right. Now, as soon as we got our little our little sliver of freedom. Everybody want to come and jump up and say, yeah, I'm oppressed too. Feminism. Yeah, I'm oppressed too. Gay uh, L, uh, gay and lesbian. I'm oppressed too. Transgenders now. Okay? Everybody started hopping up after they seen the black folks already starting the movement. They're piggybacking off of our move, movement and using our momentum to further their own personal agendas. And they're using black women to do it. Black women are the voice of this thing. They're driving the ship. Okay, well, I won't even say they're driving the ship. I think white women are driving the ship. In all honesty, I think black women are just the fuel, the gasoline. Okay, expendable, but still very important. Is what I'm seeing. Cause they look, they're they're willing to go go at this black man neck over over kids in cages. And I obviously, people, you know, I feel like that's wrong. Me personally, I'm not here for a political debate. Okay. But that has nothing to do with, like Ice Cube said, the advancement of black people in America. That has nothing to do with the investment of black people in America. So that's void. Any, anything that has anything to do with not the advancement of black people in America has nothing to do. It's voided. Doesn't matter. Let's continue. Now. I'm not going to give him no plus signs whatsoever. That, but, check, but check this out. I'm what? talking about pressing him to give things to black people. These are country issues. I'm talking about black people pressing him to give things to black people. Everybody treated him like the boogeyman. Nobody would go and press him to give things to black people. The stuff that he's doing to the rest of the country, I understand that, but 
We raggedy. We got to get our. We have to. True. We have I mean, to. Listen, listen, we gotta go. Here you go. <laughs> you see it already, right? That group pack mentality black women have. Let's defend the Democratic Party because they got they got our best right. They got our best interest in mind. They got to right. This that group. Now look at how respectful so far Ice Cube has been. Okay, look at how respectful he has been and is currently being. And now look at the aggression. Look at the buildup of aggression in the black women. Okay, look at the buildup of aggression. Now let's pay attention to that. This, we, gotta go. we we have to. We have to press any president that, that ends up winning. We have to any press president. or it's not going to work. We can't just press one side. He says or, when or we do press them side. that the other people are fine people. I mean, is that that's a, th that, that's right? A, that, I mean, I'm, and, look, he I'm not here to, I'm not, and he won't denounce the people that hurt us and suppress not, us. And, that, a, and, that a, and then the policeman I, had his neck on somebody's neck for, for, for nine minutes. He never said. Oh, come on, man. Y'all don't see what we be talking about as men when we say this is masculine behavior? Now, instead of him talking about the advancement of black people, he's sitting here arguing with a black woman who was clearly wrong, who was clearly just being emotional, as she can be. Black women have the right to be the most emotional women in America, the emotional, most emotional demographic in America. They do have that right. I understand that. But they have to realize that it's being used against them. Emotions are powerful when you turn them into passion. And it drives you, okay? Martin, Malcolm X, a great example of a person that used his emotion, learned new things, put it together into passion, and, and drove it, okay? It drove him to be great, all right? But you, women, you got to, black women in particular, you got to learn how to use that emotion to drive passion for the progression of your own people. This is not about everybody else. This is about Black people in America, black families in America, black children going to prison, black children being set up for to be on all kind of medi med medications, be set up to be on welfare, to be set up to be promiscuous. That's what this is about. Black people in America. Not everybody else is trying to piggyback off of our movement. Because then nobody cared about us over the, before the civil rights. Everybody was in cahoots working against us. Now all of a sudden we 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 got all the sauce, we got all the culture. Everybody want to piggyback. Support them, I mean, I'm not here to fight about what he did, what he didn't do. Is he a good white man? Is he a bad white man? To me, they pretty much all the same. So I now I don't agree with that. With that said, I, yeah. well, I don't well, agree I, with that. I don't agree with the, can I? I well, well, I don't look, agree. Well, I, I used to be. Look, I, well, look. Can I know I... we've we've had all kind of presidents and our situation hasn't changed. So that's why I said they're pretty much all the same when it comes to a president and dealing with uh, our situation. Um, so, let me, I gotta ask, I gotta ask this question. I gotta ask this question because you're on this show with, with the cocktails with the Queens. And there's a reason for that. It wasn't to have you defend or not defend Donald Trump. It was about I care about what's in this contract with Black America for women, and, and it's not we're not mentioned at all in the contract with Black America. And I you are mentioned. I mean, when you when you mention Black people, you mention in Black women, so oh, don't count yourself no, out. No, yes, that's you not are. true. Just like, just like administration said that when they black mentioned people black, is not black women, that's not black, black women, are that makes absolutely no sense. That they're disagreeing with that. Do you see that? There's an absolute, the Democratic Party has ab just separated everything to the point where we, they have our women thinking that that they are separate from us, that our movement is no longer conjunctual, okay? Imagine the civil rights movement without those strong sisters with those afros stepping out and stepping up with them brothers. Imagine the civil, it would have been no civil rights movement because it takes structure to do things like that. How do you take that structure? Separate the woman from the man. Separate the man from his child. Okay? Black women, stop being used as a weapon. Stop being suckers. Okay? You're being, they're using you like, they're treating you like suckers. All right? I hope that this brings it to light a little more so you can see it. But that's what they're doing. We are together in this movement or there is no movement. There can't be a movement about black people where there's only black men. There can't be a movement about black people when, when we have our women working against us. There cannot be.
the the most successful thing they did in the sixties and seventies was start to de- de- deteriorate the black family, because at least before we had strong black families. Now all of a sudden, okay, let's just keep going because I could talk about this all day. Y'all already know how I am. I I, I get real passionate about stuff like this. So let's let's just keep going so we can at least get through the video. Are not included in black people. No, that's like when the president says minorities, then he's including black people. But we yeah. all know that that's not the case. Black women have specific needs that are not also being met. And we also feel that there should be some things that are specific to us in our plight as well. And I, I understand I that. Like, I feel like as and a black man, you can lead no. I feel like well, you I just offered I just phone. offered y'all to write a section up for it. I just said I, I don't mind if you guys help us. Oh, okay. If you guys help us write a section. Do you see what's happening? The sarcasm, the cattiness. What has this man done? From the beginning of this video to now, he's been calm, collect, cool, calm, and collected, if you ask me. Very articulate, expressing himself. Express him defending what he's been doing. And why is he defending him trying to go out and get progression for black people amongst black women if they're not used as a weapon against black people, against black men? Let's keep going. No, I've been open to all kind of experts in putting this together. It wasn't just me. We right. we dealt with experts in all fields of this contract with black America. So we're willing to deal with experts in the section when it comes to women. So... That's no problem. Okay, I'll, stay, I, and I'll say help this, you write it. I'll help you write it. If, say if, you if, do get the money. How soon yeah. do you think your plan is going to go into effect? It ain't when will we start seeing I'm the benefits? Getting, I'm not getting one quarter. Okay, but, this no, is no, something no, no, he's promising. No, no, no. I said, this is something when, he's promising to the country, and he's going to have to implement it in a way he feel that can fit. Okay, just but like can Joe I just Biden's ask plan. though? What what would you see this uh, plan doing for the first year? For no. us, if he's reelected, I'm not part of the administration. Well, I'm not I, here. For, I'm here for black people. I'm here to talk to both administrations about the contract with Black America. The platinum plan is not mine. Didn't name it. Didn't put it together. All I did was meet about the contract with Black America. They added some things, and I'm willing to meet with both sides. They can add some things or not. It's fine. And then, you know, they ran off <laughs> immediately and did statements that you're basically a Republican now. And that's the thing. That's another one of them things. Where you say one thing that's against or criticizes and now you're an enemy. How in the world, just because he meet with Democratic and, Democrats and Republicans, does that make him just a Republican? It's because you want him to be an enemy so bad. You want the black You want a black man to be against you so bad. That you immediately, when he can, when he talks to both parties, so that we can get our stuff either way, regardless of who wins, we make them promise: if you want our votes, this is what you got to provide for us, or you're not getting our votes anymore. We're tired of getting led astray. So now, because he talked to both parties, as soon as he talks to Republican Party, he's all he's automatically against us. This is the mentality. It's an immature mentality. Grow up. Have tough conversations. Have hard conversations with people that disagree with you. Don't just sit in a spot where everybody agree with you all day because then you start having delusions. You start thinking you're right when you're not because everybody agrees with you. That doesn't mean you're right, okay? Start getting a bunch of yes people around you. Jeez, man, this jump be driving me up the wall, man. I hate that this is like a thing. Like, this is crazy, bro. This is crazy. This is like this. You will never see this in any other community. You will never see a panel of Asian women sitting there attacking uh, Andrew Yang. You'll never see that. You'll never see a panel of white women attacking a Donald Trump like this. Because they have a mutual respect for each other. Cursing and all that other stuff, man. Come on, bro. Not even letting the man talk. It's on them. That ain't on me. Okay. That's on them. That's not on me. I just want to make sure. We just want to clear. We can't all talk at the same time. I got to ask a question, y'all. Please. With over 20,000 lies told to the American people by this president, I'm a former friend of Donald Trump. I work with them. I made money with him. Personally, it would have served me better to still stay on his side. Why would you believe after he gets 
black votes, his whole goal from three years ago was to siphon 20% of black male votes to cross over to vote to support him. Yes. Why would we believe that he has, once he gets reelected, he will follow through with any of these plans as opposed to Joe Biden and Kamala who would be in their first term and be more indebted to do the right thing to get reelected for a second term. Right. Why should we believe why should we believe that Donald Trump would actually follow through? Is what that's a legit question that I have. He ain't follow through. Yeah, on. I, I mean, I don't know. You're gonna have to uh, figure that out because I, I'm I'm not sure if he's gonna do it or not. I'm not sure what any of these guys are gonna do. All I know is we got to push our agenda, no matter who's in there. And <laughs> I would I you know in a perfect world, you know the the Biden campaign would have brought me in and we would have really talked about the plan. And they would have did, you know, great things to their plans to uh, specifically target black people, but they chose not to, and and that's fine. No, you know, I, they, you, you, I gotta so, ask but you. The thing is, I, I'm I not a supporter you. of neither one of them. No, I'm so saying that's, that's what's late. the problem. If I'm if an they, independent wait, 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 person. You don't have a conversation with the administration if Don, if if Biden wins and Kamala wins. It's not too late. So I don't think it's fair yeah. to like, dismiss. What they exactly. are, but they're not in power yet. But they really anybody. can't say they huh? really can't say and promise things because they're not yet in power. We're not even in power in Congress. You so, can't you can't make campaign promises. But why and they do have. Why, that's why what, they have? That's what the plan make the promise well, when they're in what they, office. Well, they put out they power. put out they put out they put out the uh lift every voice can sing plan. That is their promise to America and to the world. That is their promise. So the I don't see why it's so surprising that the Republican Party was ready to meet with black people and talk about this situation, but the Democratic Party was not. Okay? The Democratic Party, when Ice Cube came up with the idea, the contract for black America, the Republican Party said, we'll sit down with you. The Democratic Party said, we don't want nothing to do with it until we get in office. You know why? Because they don't have any intentions of doing anything for black people. They don't. They just want your votes, and they get it every year. What they do is they make black women emotional, okay? And anybody that disagrees with anything that, that's the Democratic Party agenda, they attack them. They use black women as attack dogs to black men in particular because of their emotions, all right? They understand that black women would love a place where it's people. They understand that black women know pain, so they don't want to see other people go through it. Okay, so they use that to just to just fuel this endless ship, where it's just white women driving the ship, fueled by expendable d women that you know. They they can be compromised. They don't care. They don't care about the black women that's that's used to fuel this ship. They don't care about the black Twitter cancelization. Because if anything go wrong on their end, guess where they going? Right back to that white man. And then who black women gonna get to fall back on when when it go when it go south? They get the shit. They get the bad end of the stick. You know, I'm trying not. To, I'm trying to keep it PG, y'all. You feel me? I'm trying to keep it PG. Every now and then, I get a little passionate. So I might get a little, a little, a little. You feel me? I'm trying not to, you know, let it all out. I ain't gonna just be out here just cursing and going crazy. But I do get passionate about the topic. Let's keep it going though. The thing is, you can always promise the people who put you in power something more than what you just came up with. You gotta. And especially when you know there's so much more that needs to be done. And he knows that it's so much that falls short in that plan when it comes to actually helping black people, minority, people of color, uh, diversity, all those are trick words. And, and black people don't necessarily get uh, a tenth of that. So we you have to really be smart and really make sure that that money is touching the hands of the people who have really struggled in this country for ADOS, American descendants of slavery. Those are the people that, that should be included in this plan. American descendants of slavery. There are plenty of black people in America that are not American descendants of slavery. Okay? Those black people don't get a piece of the pie. Nigerians, I'm sorry. I love y'all brothers. But y'all came over, you know, some, some of y'all made the decision to come over. I'm talking about the people that didn't make that decision, the people that got drug here on boats and their uh, uh, their lineage. That's who the ADOS, American descendants of slavery, are the people that should be getting reparations. My bad, y'all. We had a little uh, technical difficulty. I'm coming back. <laughs> the video is too long. I'm not starting it over. So we just going to carry on from here. All right, I backtracked a little bit. So now we back to where he was talking about uh, uh, trick words like minorities used. To, like, like they've been using the word minority. 
to only give uh, black people a little bit of what they actually deserve because it's going to everybody else. All right, so let's keep going. Black people don't necessarily get uh, a tenth of that. So we yeah. have to really be smart and really make sure that that money is touching the hands of the people who have really struggled in this country for hundreds of years. I asked you a question, I, I, you said that the Biden campaign didn't reach out to you. And well, you said, first you said the-, the They the, did reach out, you said but first, they didn't wanna, they, they, they said, hook up, we'll hook up after, after the election. And to be fair, they want, they're not the power in party right now. I wanna ask you this, if this is true, because I had heard That's from fair. one of my sources that you were contacted for the Zoom call with Kamala Harris with and Deal Hughley, Snoop Dogg, you, Killer Mike, they were all on the call and you were not on the call. And that was okay. to speak, that was in September. And was what why so you said they didn't reach out. You said the Democrat reached to reach out, but Kamala Harris's folks reached out to you and wanted you to be on the Zoom call because they thought your voice was important. Why did you not mm -hmm. participate? You did not participate in that. Well, you know, we had spent um, you know, a lot of people time putting a contract with Black America together. And, you know, I, I just thought that getting on a Zoom call with 12 other entertainers uh, all shooting what they uh, believe needs to be done to me wasn't going to be productive. And I was also because my uh, lawyer, Matt Johnson, has a connection with Kamala Harris and I was promised a call that I never received. So, you know, that's why I didn't uh, feel like I wanted to be on that Zoom call. Um, so I feel like our plan is so broad that you can't talk about it with 12 other people who had nothing to do with it. Um, right, and right. these are a lot of things that really need to get done. So I wanted to have a serious conversation and not just, a you know, a rally cry kind of conversation. But you, but you but said you also really talk, that but you would talk to anyone that was willing to help. You said you were. I am. I am, but I, 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 I just said, I just said, I just said, I just said, that, I just said that they said they were going to call me direct and I never got that call. So when you hear that, you're waiting for that call. It never so, came. So no kind of way don't work if it's not the way that you started. You want it. Got it. Why in the world would he want Snoop Dogg and D.L. Hughley and all these people, even Killer Mike, who whom I, I definitely respect for his efforts towards, uh, making uh black people more financially giving us a leg up financially you know i respect his efforts but ice cube was the one that sat down with all the uh all the economists sat down with all the all the people who knew about policies he was the one that came up put everybody together i won't even say he came up with it he's the one that put all the great minds together to come up with this idea so why would he then go sit on a panel with 12 other people where things are going to get confused he's going to have to re-explain everything you feel me? That's just that's counterproductive. All right. Time is money. Ain't nobody trying to waste time sitting on a conference call with 12 other people. Kamala, if, if she if she cared about it that much, she would have had that personal call because he's the one with the plan. He's the one that got all these people together. So I don't see why why he was obligated to get on a group call when he asked for an individual call. Well, I want to get things done. I don't want to just spin my wheels, talk to people who can't really make it happen. So I didn't want to just, I didn't want to just, She's well, the vice president of when, 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 when I had, a, listen, listen, because I had the conversations. When I had the Zoom call with the Democratic, the DNC, the Democratic Party, we was on the call for uh, uh, probably over 45 minutes and we never even got to the contract with Black America. We never went through any of the points that needs to be dealt with when it comes to the situation in this country. No one else has a plan that deals with uh, as many issues that this administration or any administration could fix if they had the political will. And you have to give them the political will. And that's what's being done. Uh, so um, I, I, I didn't want to put anybody on blast for that. But since they said I didn't jump on the call, it's because I was promised a call where we can actually deal with this in um, a serious manner. And it wasn't just what I considered a rally call. call. But I feel like that actually could have been. Wait, wait. OK, because right. um, you could have led the call and had supporters on listening to what it was that you're trying to get them to be able to help 
rally with the initiative I, for that. I had I had been doing press about the contract of Black America outside of that, so I was using my press um, to promote the contract, not just to them dudes on the call, but to the, all of America, to all of Black America. That's we, we, where my my thing is. So I wasn't on the call, but that don't mean we couldn't have a call. Um, so right. that's that that's what happened. Um, but, and we, we, I don't feel we, like I, I don't feel like I made a mistake for not being on the call. I will tell you, we have to wrap the show. We're way over, but I just want to say, Cube, I, I hear what you're saying, but can I, I just want you to know as black women how we would feel with there's no mention specifically of black women in the contract of black America. They do have to- and this is what